Okay, so I can see from my navigator, this the whole picture, the creature's looking like it's lit from the same source. It looks like it has anatomy and that it can move. Um, this yellow actually makes sense to kind of counterbalance the bright reds and the yellow of the lip and the shell. So all of that's working, but what's not are just little detailed transitions. So if, if we use that analogy of putting the car together, we've got all these different components, these parts of the car, the wheels, the hood, the, uh, the chassis, and we've bolted them all together and they're all lit from the same condition, but now we have kind of the, the welds showing and we have to sand those down, clean them up and fix transitions that are a little wonky. So I have a wonky transition right here. I have a bit of a wonky transition right here. It's just too abrupt. I've got this cool kind of leaf texture that was stuck to this mushroom and I might want to use that in other places. I've got um, a very clear just cut out transition there. So this is what the clone stamp layer is going to help with. This is just an empty layer that I've made at the top and we're going to use this new tool called the clone stamp tool. You want the one on top, you don't want the pattern stamp tool. That's if you wanted to make like everything polka dot or something. So with the clone stamp we get to choose the texture that we're extending. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this kind of greenery texture and extend it below to to um, soften and smooth out onto the mushroom cap. Now, clone stamp, just like all of our tools, has all the options at the top. So the first thing I want is the opacity to be 100%, just so you can see it really clearly. The other thing I want is for it to be a pretty soft brush. It doesn't need to be 0% hardness, but pretty soft. And then I also want it to be a pressure sensitive brush. It's not huge. Okay, now I want to sample from all layers. This is important. This is what you can steal from. Now when I hit option, when I just hold down option rather, it gives me a target for my mouse cursor. And that's where I want to target the texture. So I'm going to target it right here and click. Now you can see it shows me a little ghost image of that texture where I targeted. And then I start painting. And you can see how that texture gets extended. But I have to move my target and click with option so it doesn't run out. So I have to keep moving my target. Now I'm doing it at 100% opacity, but I am not killing any of my existing pixels because this is all on the clone stamp layer, not on another layer. And I've locked the other layers to keep them safe. So I'm just sampling from them and bringing this texture in. Okay. Now I can soften it. It's already a, a slightly soft brush, so I have a slightly soft edge. But how can I transition it now? That's already a lot better than it was before. But I can take my eraser, soft edged eraser, and I can bite away from it. Right. Maybe at a lower opacity. And then I can go back to clone stamp. And I can use clone stamp at a lower opacity as well, once I've gotten rid of the really tough transitions. And kind of ghosted it. Right. And then I can always clone stamp on top of things I've already clone stamped at the lower opacity to help color correct or help the shape, whatever it might be. So this is a little detail cheat. to fill in little holes, weld things together. So how can I use that here? Well, let's take this leaf texture, target there, and let's move it here a little bit. 
at this lower opacity. And let's keep extending it. Just a little bit. Now let's push it up under the, the head. And by always retargeting, look like dinosaur scales, this leaf. And by hitting it at a low opacity multiple times, it's only at 42%, right? I can actually bring that texture onto any surface, onto the mushroom surface. Bring a combination of both of these textures onto the mushroom surface. So to help seam all those things together a little bit better. And then if I don't like how it looks or I think I went too far, which we often do when we use these tools, I can simply use my soft eraser and take it back, take it down a little bit. I can take the shadow from these mushrooms, kind of bring that shadow color in. So this is a, just a bunch of internal compositing. And when we overdo it, we can just sand it back. So all of our components are safe. This is just surface treatments. That can be helpful. And it's over the top of everything. So do be careful. This isn't tied to any one layer. This is just on top of everything all together. So if I really like how this transition looks for the foot, I can bring that subtly onto the other feet. See how it's targeting from one, bringing it to the other. And the more I hit it, the more opaque it will become. Soften up the top like that. And then you can always use your soft eraser and make it bigger now and knock it back a little. On these little adjustments. Okay. So now the finishing work. I'm gonna unlock my my layers. Use layer select, and then make my final cutouts. And then how do I make sure everything's as clean as it can be? Then I'm going to merge them all onto a new layer at the top. And then use that to check around the edge. While still keeping everything else. That's where I can do any last minute kind of burning. I think ultimately I might want to take the saturation just down on that back a little bit now that I've got the tail. Take it down just a little bit. That helps the head stand out. And then I needed, again, some adjustments to the cutouts around this. Select that layer. I'm going to use now the magic wand with contiguous turned off 
So I get all of these shapes, all these empty shapes. And then you see the little debris that it picks up. Then I'm going to use Select and Mask. And let that feather it in a little bit. Probably not 16 pixels. That seems like a lot. Maybe like 2 pixels. And grow the edge. Say OK. And you see how now all that debris is selected. And then the more I hit Delete, the more it will bite away. So that has cleaned that up. Now I can do the equivalent of that to everything. And this is how. So, once I'm happy with my clone stamp layer, oh, just another thing with the clone stamp layer. Once you've done it, you can also, like maybe I want to soften this transition a little bit. So let me just show you again how that works. I take a texture, I target it, and then I paint it wherever I want it. And soften these kind of mushroom cap ankles. A little of this body texture. And then I can erase away from it. It's an easy tool to overuse. That's why I always do it on a separate layer. But it's an incredibly effective tool. But you can also just take the overall opacity of your clone stamp layer down, right, if you think it's overdone. And or you can do direct adjustments to it. So I can take the levels of just my clone stamp layer and make them a lot darker, make them a lot lighter. I'm just going to push mine a little bit darker. And I can also change the temperature of them because they're mostly in shadows. I can take the color balance and shift it a little bit bluer or a little bit more cyan. Okay. Maybe the highlight's a little bit warmer. So all these different techniques you know, will help your just options you can play with with your character. The one thing I never played with the color balance on was this tail. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. And then we're going to merge everything together. Now I'm doing the color balance just so it all looks like it's under the same lighting. All right, that looks good. So now what do I do? I turn off my background and my sketch so I see the checkerboard behind. I've done my best to clean it up. I go to my clone stamp layer, which is on top of everything, and I hold down Option. And then I go to Layer, Merge Visible. That will take all the layers that are turned on underneath and put them into one new layer. Then I can turn my background back on, and then I can use the magic wand with contiguous turned off, tolerance of 32, and select all around my creature. This will reveal if I have any stray marks, any little debris. You see it? These little things. <laughs> and that can help me to clean them up because I don't want to bring that in. So I'm going to hold down shift on my lasso, and I'm just going to bring all those in. I can also use select and mask, but I don't want to soften everything further. But if I was doing a furry creature, I might want to soften everything further. So instead, I just want to make sure these are added into the selection so I can do one last delete before I save it as a PNG without a background. 
So this is a combined layer now. 